Here we are on KCIW. Thank you so much for tuning in and your attentiveness and patience while being with full attention to the radio. Perhaps you're out there watching sunset, eating dinner, cleaning the kitchen, all the fun things we do, especially cleaning the car. That's honestly my favorite time to listen to the radio show. Ah, oh, this is Quality Living. I am Amanda, the geometric yoga teacher here in town of Brookings, Oregon. It is such an honor and a gift to be here in such a glorious, luxurious place. Sometimes we forget. The weather throws us up and down. However, we really are gifted to be here. And so thank you for listening. We bring in quite a variety of different people from our community and surrounding areas to highlight them, amplify them, and thank them for the work that they do in our community. Today, we wish to give a super special thank you to Alisa Green from the Green Team LLC. Thank you, Alisa. Well, thank you, Amanda, for having me here at KCIW. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. The gifts that you have and the experience that you have is so special and unique and fuels quite a large part of our community. So let's hear all about you. Well, <laughs> well I would hope that um, what I do in the community would fuel um, th different uh, nonprofits and help people in the area. And I've been here since 96 when I moved with my son um, to come to a quieter community and one that I could enjoy my art and being able to volunteer and have a community um, to raise my son. Mm -hmm. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, was able to be a soccer coach and be involved in the school. I volunteered at school for over 10 years. And um, so I was heavily involved there and also at the, the church, the Brookings Church of the Nazarene. Mm -hmm. I was a, a Sunday school teacher there <laughs> and did this one thing called Adventure Club. And so we were always doing a lot of fun things with the kids. And so um, sometimes that, that chapter has passed. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not so much working with the kids now, but um, certainly appreciate all that the church has done um, in my life. Um, I um, also am an author, and I wrote a book called The ABCs of Assisted Living, and that was a practical guide to choosing your home with care. That came out in 2017, and when that happened, a lot of things um, started to change in my uh, focus at that point. When I did uh, come first come to Brookings, I joined Habitat for Humanities a couple of years after I came and learned about opportunities and educational opportunities through nonprofit. And one of the first challenges that happened is the board of directors on Habitat for Humanity um, wanted to go to Lake Oswego for this, this class. And there was all these different classes to learn from. And I said, look, there's only one class I'd want to go to, mm -hmm. and that's community development. Oh, That was the only class I wanted to go to, um, but it was $2,000. And so the boardroom got real quiet at that point. And I said, but the only way I would go is if we get a grant. And everybody, you could hear them exhale. It was just mm. <laughs> it was like, whoa. <laughs> and so, um, so anyways, at that point, um, I did write a grant. We did get it. And then <gasps> uh, three other people got to go to oh. that class. So it was really awesome. And that was my first, whoa, grant writing can help us as a community get things that are beneficial so we can learn and um, very, very important to me personally. And so um, at that point is when I wrote my first grant. And, and which year was that? 
That was back in 2000, in about 2002. And I still have the materials from that class because it was put on by this guy that had raised millions of dollars all over the U.S. And so, yeah, it was very, it was a great class. And I've used those materials to help me um, through the years. Um, so then after that, I started hanging out at the library a lot uh-huh. to learn more about grant writing and to learn about Oregon uh, foundations. There's a book called Oregon Foundation, Foundation Data Book, and that book has all the foundations, most of them anyways, and the ones that um, that help Oregon nonprofits. And so that book, I studied from cover, cover to cover. And it used to come out every two years. And Craig, the, the author, no longer does it. He retired. Oh. I'm like, oh, man. Oh. We really needed this book. It was, it's a really good source. Right. And... So anyways, so then I went to some grant writing classes and started grant writing. And and I really felt from 2005 till, I mean, right now, my mission is still the same. It's uh-huh. to teach nonprofits grant writing. Which is nearly life or death for some nonprofits. It's either they exist or they don't with funding or without funding. Right. And a lot of nonprofits, um, especially locally, don't always tap into the grant grant funding that's available to them. And so because of that, um, they, you know, they do their fundraisers and they do the best that they can. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize they could leverage all that money that they get and pretty much almost double it. And so then they don't, then they'd have what they need to do what they're trying to do. What, so, right, they could actually have the energy and the time instead of all this. It is a lot of stress, just like everyone experiences with, with funding and how are they going to pay the rent and how are they going to get the people when nobody's volunteering and how, how do they make the mission complete when their main goal is doing the mission, not all the other parts. Right. That's absolutely true. And so one of the things that I like to do is I work with their team, Mm -hmm. the nonprofit team, to make sure that they have what they need to get their grants. Uh And a big part of that Mm. is the financials, Mm -hmm. you know, having their annual budget intact, having their quarterlies, um, or having a a profit and loss or an income statement done on a regular basis. Um, because all of the grants ask for these things, having their board of directors listed out the way they need to list them out. There's formats. Weight, formats, and even the format of listing the title of that, you uh, know, their their nonprofit name, a couple of downlines, and then um, what it is. So there's, there's a lot of these intricacies to grant writing. And so um, I have since, um, I gave a grant writing class about five years ago, at the activity center. (laughs) And um, this year I started giving a class out at SWAC. And Uh my first class there was um, in the fall. And it's a two Saturday class. And each each part of the class is two and a half hours. Oh, how special. And so that class, I'm going to be doing it again. Okay. January 27th and February 10th out at SWAC. February 10th is my birthday. Pardon me to interrupt you. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll celebrate then. I will be in class. (laughs) (laughs) And so so if you would like to attend that class and know more, their new um, brochure is coming out with their classes fairly soon. Okay. For the local college here in Brookings. Yes, for SWAC. 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 Yes. With the W. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I'm just all full of enunciation issues today. Pardon me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the the basis of what I do. Grant specialist and author, which is so huge and such a magical gift. When it's it really getting the pieces together to the puzzle, like giving them the border. It's like sometimes. If you can just get that border together, the rest of the puzzle fills in. 
Right. And and that's where um, my class does talk about the key pieces. Mm-hmm. And I, ha- I do teach uh, nonprofits one-on-one. So a lot of times I'll sit with a board of directors and I do have a class, a different class um, that I teach from there because there's a lot of things that nonprofits do that they do, they do it and they're not real sure always why. And one of the big ones is capturing all of the volunteer hours because the volunteer hours are worth $31.80 an hour. Because, and it's not necessarily cash, but what it is is value. Yes, it is. We think of the word value. You asked earlier about value. And so when we think of that, and a foundation is looking at a nonprofit and they see maybe you have 100 hours of volunteer hours, they go, wow, okay, so this, this organization has support within the community and um, then they can, they can see that. Right, there's an added level of an a, a impact of quality. Right. Yeah. Right, quality and value. That's recordable. And it and it's something that they can show, right? And right. so many, so so many have no idea about this. Well, a lot of them don't, and that's why I really do believe that um, having the education around um, grant writing is so important. Um, kind of an interesting little fact: back in two thousand, about two thousand and five, I believe it was. That's we were receiving in our community about five to ten thousand dollars in grant funding, and in twenty, I believe it was twenty between twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty three. This was, I saw it in a recorded. Um, I forget which where I saw it to be quite honest, but we had received two hundred and forty eight thousand dollars in grant funding. And I'm excited about that because I see a lot more um, nonprofits utilizing grant funding now mm. and then back in 2005. And it's exciting to see some of the people that I introduced to grant writing, still grant writing for entities in our community and making a difference. Mm-hmm. So this is good. If you're a grant writer out there, for Brookings, thank you, because you are helping our community and you are helping so many people um, to make a better life in Brookings and beyond. So exactly. thank you. Yeah, to be able to reach their goals, make their aims and surpass it and flourish with love and support that keeps growing. It's like the garden that just keeps producing. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. (laughs) Yeah, actually, what you just said is interesting because uh, I did a grant recently to an organization and they gave us, um, one of the groups, $500. And with the caveat that they will give us continued support year after year. So that one effort, that one effort is going to ripple and and that funding is going to continue. That is valuable. It really really is. It's it's such an important piece. You know, so much of us do the things that we do wholeheartedly and without you know to to give without ex- any expectations to just make it happen. Then you know, at the end of the day, after doing that for so many years, you find yourself not able to do that anymore. And a lot of it comes from the fact that there's, you know, time, energy, resources may or may not have ran out and it's back to the grinding board. Well, my goodness, what you've just said sums up my history a little bit. Um, I don't know if you realize this, Amanda, it's <laughs> kind of funny. So I actually did meet one-on-one Um, at the library with many people, Mm -hmm. Mm one-on-one. And I would sit down with the grant book. I showed them the different funding available in Oregon. And then, you know, we'd have a discussion and get, I would get people going on grant writing. 
I did that for free for 10 years Ah. in Brookings. What an angel. Well, I just, I really honestly felt the value of that. But at the time I had a um, part-time job at the hospital. It was basically full-time because Mm -hmm. I did call. And so I had support. And in, in 2014, I had an accident um, as a nurse. And unfortunately, I fell backwards and injured my neck. And mm. so at the time, that pretty much took me out of surgery because we have to be able, able to, you know, be able to pick up 40 to 50 pounds. Um, the trays get very heavy. And so and we move around a lot. It's actually a very dangerous environment tell in a us, lot of ways. Tell us, listeners, which type of nurse you were. I was a surgical nurse. A surgical nurse. Yes, for over 25 years. 25 years. That is intense. It is intense, but it was so much fun. Oh. We had a great team, and I still love my nurse friends from all over the nation, Um I have some special uh, nurse friends, of course, down in Crescent City in Hayuchi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyways. Um, Hi, guys. <laughs> hello. And anyways, um, yeah, that was, that, that was a big part of my life, and I really enjoyed it. And then the, the fall? The fall pretty much um, took that away. Ooh. And um, I did try to work in some other areas in nursing that, were not favorable um, ultimately for me. And um, and so I ended up writing a book. And then <laughs> back in 2019, I, I said, how else can I use my business? And I go, oh my gosh, the grant writing. Well, which, which book did you write? Which book oh. came from this whole evolution of your nursing into oh. injury into grant writing experience? That's right. I didn't say it yet, did I? <clears throat> It's called the ABCs of Assisted Living. That's the one that you started with. A practical guide to yes. choosing your home okay. with care. Mm-hmm. That is the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that book, I'm really thankful that I've gotten a lot of feedback, that, that it's been a uh, good support for people that are either considering assisted living or their families are needing cons- assisted living. And so I, I've got really good, good uh, support from that. Is that your only book? That That's my only to? book published at this, at this point. At this point, because yes. I'm sure there's tons in the burner. <laughs> well, I do have uh, actually several books mm-hmm. that I've written and I have not done, moved on yet with them. And those are children's books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I have a grant writing book that is in progress. And hopefully, if hopefully it'll be published within the next couple of years. Nice. That's what I'm hoping for and working towards. I'm also working, um, there's a class that I'm attending because of my business. It is at the Small Business Development Center. Mm -hmm. And it just started last month and it's for small business management. And so I'm really thankful that SBDC is offering this class to the small business um, people in this area. It's, it already is valuable. Uh, they're three-hour classes, and there's nine of them. So it ends like in June. Okay, that's a huge course. It's a huge course. It's a huge commitment, and I'm thankful for this opportunity. And um, so just so you know, I'm working on that. And I'm learning business skills and sales, focusing on sales and marketing. I've also been doing that since about 2017. But this, this course is a little bit different than what I've already learned. So I'm, I'm wanting to be in line with what SBDC uh, would like. So Very well. How about the way for our quality living listeners to contact you, which is your preferred preference of contact? Where are you and how can say there's these ears of nonprofit organizers 
listening out there or those who are thinking about having a nonprofit, not sure which way to go, how to even start. Um, because as a nonprofit consultant, how would, how, how do they get to you? Well, the best way to get to me is to call me. That's probably the best way. Okay. Um, but I also have a internet, um, an email address, and it's childwriterforever at yahoo.com. Okay. So it's one one word, child writer, W-R-I-T-E-R, forever at yahoo.com. That is one way. And also my phone, um, my I'm really not that comfortable giving out my home phone, but they can call perhaps KCIW, KCIW. at 541 and Alisa Green, the Green Team for Nonprofit Consulting and specializing in grant writing and budget. Also project creation. She, again, her email is childwriterforever at yahoo.com. C-H-I-L-D-W-R-I-T-E-R for E V E R at yahoo.com. And you can always email contact at kciw.org. And we also do have our link online. If you go to the KCIW link, search for quality living, click the button. We will have in the description all the information to get in contact with Elisa for. Guide, support, consulting on grant writing for nonprofits. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> appreciate course. that. We really, really appreciate your time, your energy, all the teachings, the learnings, the studying, the practice that it takes. Because earning knowledge to share knowledge is a ton of work, as most teachers are. It really does so much time and energy goes into creating those lesson plans, not only presenting it and giving grades and learning how to strategize all the systems. It, it Learning is, is powerful, and, and it's very brave of you to take this on. Uh, you know what? I think I just stepped into it. <laughs> and I go, oh, my goodness, this could change Brookings. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited by that. And I was really excited because the nonprofits I've been able to assist, they are so surprised when we start doing cer certain things to help their nonprofit. And it's very exciting. And, you know, you have to set goals. Mm -hmm. The nonprofits have mm -hmm. to have goals mm -hmm. and they have to have their vision of what they are trying to achieve and also their mission. Mm. They have to know the their mission, mission right. and make it real clear to everyone. And so everybody, the team can get on the same page mm -hmm. and start thinking of ways and also tools mm -hmm. they need. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need, like, for instance, um, a radio station. Maybe they need some more mics. Maybe they need some, some special soundboard. Because KCIW is a nonprofit. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. KCIW is a nonprofit. And there's no telling what all they need. And so... Um, making that list of things that would be really helpful to have is the first step for any nonprofit. Make the list. Make the list. Make the list and have dollar signs next to it of how much something, you know, your goals, how much they would um, cost. Right. And so then when you bring somebody, a uh, grant writer in, they can look like at that. Alisa Green. And... <laughs> yeah, they can look at it and go, wow, we can do this, this or this, you know, or maybe we can make this a year long goal mm -hmm. to get these mm -hmm. things funded. Mm -hmm. So part of the strategy in grant writing is knowing what the nonprofits need. Okay. And so at that point, um, that they can really, the grant writer can really help you. 
Do you have a list? A list. Of needs and things that they need? I believe I have a novel. (laughs) (laughs) I have a list that I keep with me all the time. Um, Yes, because that's the only way I achieve it. I put it on the list and I get to mark off all those lists. I've probably knocked out a couple of series already. However, um, I've got to finish the novel. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, You know, I'll just tap into the fact that um, there's so many nonprofits that I personally am connected with and, and participate with, including KCIW, that I grew up with nonprofits that as a patient advocate is kind of how I got into the end of life doula transition, being there for people without a voice. I really felt like, you know, the big corporations with all the funding and all the avenues of selling all the things. I love them. We need them. We do. And they've taught us how to not feel like the little guy and be able to feel big and tall and brave and strong and be out there and write our lists and present them to people who can support us. Yes. Yes. Having a personal list is a good idea too. Um, in 2024, I'm going to be working with um, small businesses as well. So that'll come um, after the first of the year because I am I am working towards that goal mm-hmm. also. How is your list? How's my list? Yeah. I have a list. You do? Oh, you bet I do. <laughs> you bet. Good. Good. Mm-hmm. Yes. You and keep adding to it and crossing things off? Yes. Yes. Always. Okay. Always. Keep it, keep it moving. Exactly. In motion. In, in motion. Yeah. I'm also um, president of Brookings Harbor Education Foundation. And so always have, we always have a list down there um, also um, for funding that we are trying to achieve. Okay. And so not to throw you a curveball, but that's, that is also has been a big part of my life. I've been working with uh, Brookings Harbor Education since 2005 and they're at PO box 4292 and to date we have given over $87,430 to Brookings, Oregon uh, through nonprofit funding and also through the schools. Mm, Thank you. Thank you and thank you all the participants that have made that possible. That's a form, I would say, of peaceful support without even having to ask, how do you feel about it or how do you activate it? That is a very kind way of bringing peaceful support to the community. We're excited. We have a great team. (laughs) We've always had a great team. Thankful for that. Absolutely marvelous. Well, if anyone out there could just give this woman a big, huge squeeze and a hug anytime you see her. I just, uh, you know, give you one myself and I say thank you for all that you give and that you do. And it's it's very supportive and we love the level of quality that you bring today and to the future. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you, KCIW, for having me here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Immensely. Thank you, listeners. We'll talk to you soon. Be sure to call and email and we will get to you. Mm-hmm.